This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More about them later in the video. Yeah, so unfortunately, my default day is lying in bed all day, uh, watching anime, eating a bunch of junk food until my brain literally rots and I hate myself. And yeah, that went on for years and years. And trust me, it's not because I didn't try. Like I really tried to not be like that, but pretty much like whatever I did, after a few days, I would just kind of end up in that default state again. Until I finally read James Clear's book called Atomic Habits, where he talks about a mindset shift. What I've been trying all along was trying to change myself, you know, like try to get myself more motivated, more disciplined. But what he argues is that it's actually much easier to change the environment around you so that it makes it easier for you to achieve your goals. As he says in the book, you do not rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems. In other words, the trick is to design systems and checkpoints in your environment so that you're able to achieve your goals. So without further ado, let me share with you guys these systems and checkpoints that have really changed my life. Or as I like to call it, mind hacks to get my lazy ass to do things. Number one, sign up for things that cause a lot of pain if you don't do them repeatedly. You know when you have like a deadline in place, maybe you have like an assignment due or you have a test, then suddenly you are like filled with this motivation and you're like hyper productive right before the deadline. So what some people suggest is that you should put these fake deadlines in place. But for me, you know, it doesn't work at all because my brain is just like, lol, it's fake. So I actually have to put like real deadline for things where if I don't do it, it would cause me a lot of pain, make me very sad, hurt my pride, basically like have real bad consequences. For example, when I was learning to code, I would start learning something and then I would give up. So what I did is I got a research job at a research lab in bioinformatics. And since I had to code in order to like do my job um, and the lab coded completely in R, that really forced me to learn how to code because I couldn't like not do it because I signed a contract. And also because like every week I would have a meeting with the um, professor and he would ask me how much progress I made. So that fear of disappointing him as well as legal repercussions if I just like not showed up or something was enough to who forced me to learn how to code. That's actually what kickstarted this entire journey into uh, coding and, and data science and computer science. So yeah, thank you, Yuri, if you are ever watching this. Next example, these study with me live streams. I pre-signed myself up to do these study with live streams four times a week, and I broadcast that everywhere. So everybody knows that I'm gonna do it. And even though sometimes I really don't feel like doing it, the fear of disappointing like over a hundred people is enough for me to force myself to do it. Next mind hack to get my lazy ass to do things. Focus on one thing per day, or if you have a job, like maybe two things per day. I used to have this really bad habit where I would detail out this plan that I would do for the day and it would be like, wake up at 6.30, then gonna have breakfast for 30 minutes and then read a book for an hour and then go exercise for an hour. And inevitably when I failed one of these things, I would just be like, I guess I'm a failure. I guess I'll just have to try again tomorrow. And then I would, you know, again, degenerate into this state. Or even worse, sometimes I just like look at the schedule and I don't even feel like doing the first thing. So I just not even bother getting out of bed. To not give myself that excuse, what I instead do now is that I tell myself there's only one thing or like two things that I need to get done today. And I would remind myself of this one thing throughout the day. For example, today's one thing is that I need to film this video. Would it be great if I also responded to email, cleaned up my closet, or like scripted my next video? Yes. But there's only one thing that I have to do, which is film this video. I have a couple tips here to make it even easier for you to start doing that one thing. So the first one I first learned about from Thomas Frank, which is input-based goals. So instead of having a goal of like write this entire essay, you can instead have the goal of working 10 minutes on this essay, and that would count. This makes it a lot easier to start because it's much more clear what it is that you have to do. And once you actually start, you would likely find that it's a lot easier to continue. Second tip is I believe originated from Mark Twain and then popularized by um, Brian Tracy, which is to eat the frog first thing in the morning and start working on this one thing that you have to do as early as possible because that's when you have the most motivation and willpower. Third mind hack that I use to get my lazy ass to do things is to just show up or to just try. Like if I can't even get myself motivated enough to start working on something, then I kind of like scope this down even more and make the bar so low where it's literally, I just have to try to work on the thing that I'm supposed to work on. That is really hard to have excuses for not doing. Like I, you don't even have to do it. You literally just have to try to do it. I set this as my lowest bar. And the whole idea behind this is that you will at least 
do more than if you just didn't even bother to try. For example, my goal for these study live streams is literally just to show up. And there are days in which I sit there and I just like cannot focus and I pretty much I get nothing done. But there are also days where I find that, hey, I can actually get something done. Even though on average, I'm always late at least five minutes. Um, but I, I always show up. And over time, there's this very powerful effect that comes into play, which is the compounding effect. Credits to James Clear again here, but the whole idea is that if you can get yourself to be 1% better at whatever it is that you're trying to improve or try to work towards, then after like say an entire year, then ultimately that number is gonna be so much bigger than if you just didn't try at all. Or in my case, I don't think I can really improve 1% better um, each time. So maybe like I can improve 1% better 100 days of the year, but when you add that together, it's still a lot bigger than one, which is our starting point. Another example is that I've really been trying to establish my morning and night routine more consistently. As you can see, as time goes on, it's still pretty spotty, but it's far, far better than what it was in the beginning. My fourth mind hack to get my lazy ass to do things is to keep score or some sort of scoreboard or tracker to see your progress over time. Having a way to track your goals serves two really important purposes. The first one is that, you know how sometimes you just feel really stagnant, like you put in so much effort and you feel like nothing actually happened and you're still in the same place. Well, by looking at the tracker, you often be surprised by how far you've actually come from your very beginning. And the second reason is that it's super clear for you to see if you've done something or not, like if you've progressed towards your goal. So it's really hard for you to pretend that you're not sure if you did it because you know, it's like clear as day if you did it or not. I find that this is an especially powerful combination when you combine this mind hack with the signing up for really painful things mind hack. Like with my study with Tina live streams, we review the scoreboard where I track my habits and progress towards goals and I can't really hide from it because it's there on display. I'm not gonna go into too much more detail about how the scoreboard works and stuff because I did an entire video about this, so do check it out if you're interested. Okay, fifth mind hack is to remind yourself that you're going to die and and how sad you will feel if you didn't even try to achieve your goals. Somebody once told me that the scariest thing is that when you die, you were able to meet the person that you could have been. And that really stuck with me because I would feel so sad if the person that I am is so different from the person who I could have been. It is super easy to, as they say, lose sight of the forest for the trees. So yeah, to remind myself of this, I keep this pack of cards over here that has my, what my goals are and why it is that I'm doing the things that I'm doing. You can check out this video over here where I talk about exactly how the pack of cards work and what I have on mine. Number six is getting out of your own head. You know sometimes where you're just really not feeling it, like really, really not feeling it? So this is a trick inspired by the channel What I Learned. And he says the key is to do two push-ups and take a cold shower. And he goes into like all the science behind this. So you, I will link the video below if you're interested. However, I am rather soft and I hate cold showers. So I kind of like modified this. So it's do two pushups um, and then go out for a walk. And I gotta say, it really does wonders. So instead of kind of like banging your head on the wall, you kind of take a step back and you realize like, hey, um, surrounding this wall is places that you can just walk through, if that analogy makes sense. But yeah, this is a really, really good trick from when I'm really not feeling. Okay, so after you mind hack yourself to start studying, you should check out today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an interactive online platform that teaches you fun hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science for all abilities and levels. The key word here is interactive because the best way to learn is by doing it yourself, especially in technical fields. Brilliant teaches you to problem solve and also gives you clear intuitive ways of approaching questions as opposed to just straight out telling you to answer. When I was prepping for my data science interview, the courses that were the most helpful were probability fundamentals, casino probabilities, and statistics. And I really give brilliant credit for helping me pass the math and statistics portion of my interview. These days, I'm also personally really eyeing the crypto course since this is something that I think is super important to learn about. You can get started for free and join the millions of people who are already learning on brilliant. Head on over to this link over here and also link linked in description. The first 200 people who sign up using this link will also get 20% off the annual membership. All right, back to the video. Final mind hack. 
and this is more of a long-term kind of thing but it has saved me a lot of time and just has helped me a lot and that is to stop using social media i know it might be kind of weird coming from me because you know i like do youtube and stuff but i actually don't use social media personally no facebook no instagram no reddit twitter tiktok whatever or even the news i just have like zero willpower like if it's on my phone i'm definitely gonna scroll through it and just like waste a lot of time and feel really bad over myself you might be thinking like okay like maybe i can delete social media but how can i possibly not look at the news and what i have to report after i started doing this is that <laughs> if something is actually important enough in the news then somebody will tell you about it and if somebody doesn't tell you about it then it wasn't important enough and you really didn't need to know that when i feel bored what i do instead is that i go read a book where i go clean or something like that and that's helped a lot in getting myself to do these things that i really struggle with doing previously so there you go those are my seven mind hacks to get my lazy ass to do things with that being said though i do want to make a note that sometimes these actually end up working too well and you kind of just go too far with it which is what happened to me back in december like i totally burned myself out especially using mind hack number one which was signing myself up for a lot of things that had really bad consequences be warned don't take it too far anyways that's all i have for you guys today let me know in the comments which one kind of resonated the most for you which one you might try yourself and if you have any additional mind hacks please leave it down below because i'll be down to try them see you guys in the next video or live stream